curve and is producing a considerable amount of umbral field snaps, filament destabilizations, and minor CMEs. You can see them leaving the sides of the sun from our view. What takes the most concern is the incoming active region. It crested into view yesterday and is a highly complex sunspot group with good size and ability to morph around. We're eyeing that region for solar flares as we continue to watch those plasma filaments as well. For now, solar wind is calm and should stay that way today. Largest quake of the last day was a six-pointer that struck at blot echo depths beneath Taiwan, but it wasn't the top shake of note. Yesterday, we said that the 4.8 in La Palma was hopefully the peak of the sequence, but hours later it hit 4.9. The level of concern for larger events continues growing there. First up in the science articles is one of the attempts to fix the oversensitivity in CMIP6, the current climate model. Turns out that with cloud radiative forcing uncertainty that is still out of reach, no progress on those biases in this work, probably because they didn't include the rest of the forcing factors. Those would be the sun, geomagnetic field, and geoelectric systems, by the way, and here we see a darn convincing feedback identification of ENSO back into the global electric circuit. It is well established that this circuit is one way the sun can affect the weather, including El Nino and La Nina, but this feedback from the strongest cycle oscillations means that there are both direct and subsequent indirect influences from events affecting the geoelectric system. Back in time, quickly, for what is the first identification of MIS-3, Marine Isotope Stage 3, and a mega flood in the Americas. This one was centered in Canada. It matches the Greenland and Vostok event about 60,000 years ago, they think, but their timing range actually means it could have also been Le Champ or Mono Lake. It's one of the big confirmations in the Americas from that time period. Now, from the past cycles to the current one, the ongoing ozone looks we've been doing get some confirmation as the troposphere levels are lower than expected based on satellite measurements, and there's a definitive drop at the lowermost stratosphere. You add this into the recent paper that said everywhere except Antarctica is losing ozone, which you'll also recall did not include the 2020 vortex marks where ozone hit record lows. And the reason for this season, the weakening magnetic field of our planet, is continuing to show anomalies. From the actual secular variation, the pole shift and the weakening of the field, to the unusual chorus waves and here, VLF bursts. These new features are especially intriguing scientists because of the unexpected frequencies. But only unexpected if you expect the magnetic field to be right as rain. And it's not.